Hello everybody, welcome to another session of the CCI After School Club. It is great to have you here, thank you for joining us. We are very excited for today's session as usual. If you haven't been joining the CCI After School Club um, previously, I'm going to run through a few of the basics and get you started. If you have been joining us since when we started or if you've been to a session before, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to today's session on getting started with audiovisual content. So today's session is led by a wonderful creative technologist whom I am going to introduce shortly. Um, as I said, I'm just going to take you through the basics of how the After School Club works and why we do what we do, and then we'll get stuck straight into a session. So my name's Jasmine, and I will be very loosely host hosting the session today. I will be introing and outroing all of you wonderful people. And again, a massive thank you from the CCI and a big warm welcome from us for joining today's event. So without further ado, in case you don't already know, let me explain what the CCI is. So the CCI is an institute based within UAL, University of the Arts London, and CCI stands for Creative Computing Institute. So we support interdisciplinary teaching, research and knowledge exchange, all at the intersection of computational technologies and creativity. So we are a bunch of academics, researchers, creative technologists, technicians and um, teachers and tutors. We've got courses and programmes such as this one that we run from the Institute and everything is all about creative tech. So it's a fantastic space to be working within. The CCI After School Club is part of our outreach. So we're really keen to work with young people and inspire people to use technology in creative ways. The After School Club was going to be physical. It was going to be based in our community centre, the playground, which is in Camberwell. And then, of course, a pandemic, pandemic, a pandemic happened and we were unable to run the after school club physically, but we didn't let that stop us. And we've now produced an online program of the kinds of things that we were going to be teaching. And actually it's made artists more accessible to us. So the artist today is joining from Korea and um, it's a completely different time over there, but it's fantastic that they're still able to join us and lead a session. So although COVID closed a lot of doors, it opened um, a lot more. And the After School Club is really working as a virtual programme and will continue to run it until things open again. Um, so we've got two more sessions for you um, in this programme and then we'll be starting back up again in September. So do keep your eyes peeled for more. And just to quickly say, today we've got Getting Started with Audio Visual Content. Um, next week, we have got one around the basic mathematics that goes behind creative computing. And our final session in this program on the 28th of July is on Python and how to draw using Python. So there's loads more to look out for. I will cover how you can sign up for those sessions at the end of today. but before we get stuck in, just a quick note to say, hopefully you are joining us from Slido. So you'll have got an email two hours before the event and 10 minutes before the event with a link um, from Eventbrite with a link to join the event from Slido. Um, so if you're not joining from Slido, please do um go back into your Eventbrite emails and join us there. This will allow you to ask questions during the event and be a little bit more interactive. So we've got YouTube comments switched off because of course this is an after school club. Our priority is young people. So for safeguarding reasons, we have to switch the comments off, but you can still submit questions to the artist via Slido. So hopefully you are all joining via the link that you are supposed to be joining from. Um, just to speak you through how Slido works, down the right, you have got um, 
you've got space to ask questions um, and we're going to ask you to leave a bit, little bit of feedback at the end as well. So please do look out for that. So if you do get stuck at any point or would like to ask Young Jun anything, please do submit your questions. And up at the top, you've got a menu. Um, <laughs> the technician said it looks like a hamburger and it does. It's three lines at, at the top. And if you click that, you are able to look, check out the CCI website. You're able to email us if you're interested in collaborating with us or um, finding more about what we do and our courses. You can directly contact us via there. And we've also added the download link for Touch Designer. So again, hopefully you've been receiving the emails from Eventbrite. Um, and it does have the option to download Touch Designer for free um, prior to the session because it does take a few minutes. If you haven't managed to do that and you do want to join the session, um, the follow along tutorial today, feel free um, to start downloading it now. You just might be behind a little bit, but not to worry. All our sessions are available to watch afterwards. Um, so yeah, we'll release this and you'll be able to rewatch if if you do get overwhelmed at any point. Um, but yeah, it's going to be fantastic. Touch design is great and it's going to be great to get Young Jun um, in to explain more about how it works and all of the amazing things you can do with audio using it. Um, and I think that that is everything. Main thing is have fun um, be safe and um, be experimentative. As I said, if you have any questions, please do submit them via Slido. And I'll be back to close the session at the end. Sit tight and enjoy. I'm now going to introduce our visiting artist today, Young Jun, who's going to lead the session. Welcome, Young Jun. Hi. <clears throat> Thanks for coming. And as, you, as we know, we're going to go through today Touch Steiner session. <clears throat> get started with audiovisual contents. So before we get started, let me first introduce how you can download. If you haven't downloaded a touch signer, it's completely fine. As Jasmine uh, already told, you can uh, follow up later on after this session. But if you want to have a live session today, you must download uh, touch signer. Uh, here's the link and uh, you can download uh, if you download the touch signer, you're going to see it, uh, the window version and um, Mac version. So depending on your software, you can download either way. Uh, you can download uh, only free version of touch signer. So some features will be limited, but it's completely fine. Today, I'm not going to use like re uh, restricted features for touch signer. So let's get started. Um, so basically, Touch Designer is a media server. You can uh, operate with a procedural node-based uh, programming environment. So it's really uh, powerful because you can integrate software or hardware. You can simply connect it to computer, and you can play with uh, audio or visual in real time. So simply, you can build and compose a 3D in real time. So it means you can play with um, uh, audio and uh, 3D environments. So, so you can simply uh, you can simply build a control and manipulate the audio visual uh, in Touch Signer. In order to do that, you can you you can uh, communicate um, complex communication in Touch Signer. So as I said, I'm gonna through I'm gonna go through today um, different uh, features of Touch Signer's functions. So one of the functions really important is is availability for projection mapping. So as I um, as I use uh, Touch Signer for uh, three to four years, I've been using for projection mapping at theater. So it was quite useful because it's as as available uh, in real time if you want to project something. So and on stage, you can also uh, be available. Uh, you can uh, you can do communicate with lighting consoles. So if you want to control light on stage, you can simply control 
lighting and visual and sounds in real time. Um, and everything will be uh, half automatically works, but half of them will be uh, manipulated and controlled by technician. So um, here's VR and AR. It's also available in Touch Signer. However, uh, as a free version of Touch Signer, some features are very limited. So you're not able to use virtual reality and um, most feature of augmented reality. And uh, you can do Python. You can include Python because Touch Signer is basically built in Python. So you're fully customized. Uh, widgets or interface with Python, and you can include open sources. You can simply download and include and code uh, to use machine intelligence depending on your interest. And here's the network we're going to go through today. So as you can see, these uh, different blocks is connected for the outcome. So every network, every it's, we, we call this is operator. So the operators works uh, different functions with different functions. So you can connect it and you can link it together to have a final outcome. This is basic and simple um, understanding of Dutch Steiner. So my name is Yongjin Chang. So I'm a theater designer and creative technologist. So let me first briefly tell you how I use Touch Signer for my projects. And you can see uh, the visuals and images here. I use, I did projection mapping on stage. It's audio reactive. Sometimes it's movement reactive. So actors are um, dancing on stage and visuals and audio is responding to their movements in real time. And this is hologram effects I, I used. So on stage, you can project the visual. So by using black goes, which is like transparent, transparent goes, you can uh, have uh, holographic effects with uh, the stage lights. And this is interactive installation I did. So, well, with Touch Designer, I use tracking technology. I embedded um, tracking machine intelligence in Touch Designer. So, using video camera or webcam, now is able to detect people's movements. So I did capturing uh, the people's hand gesture. So when you close to the wall, it uh, it makes a ripple effect. So it's, it's, it's fully interactive. And I did a digital um, digital uh, project, and uh, Touch Signer can fully capture three D three D. 3D signals from physical space. I used um, Kinect or um, a real sense, which is depth camera. You can um, detect people's entire body in physical space and translate into uh, 3D data. Uh, and uh, you can manipulate and you can uh, control the data to visualize a complex sense of um, colors and layouts and different uh, lighting environments. So what you can do with Touch Designer is, well, you can do interactive installation and you can do digital theater or you can do VJing in live events or you can visualize data uh, algorithm by using computer, uh, computer science because everything will be uh, will be translated into data algorithm, uh, and you can see the signals. So you can simply convert it to um, the three D objects, and you can put three D object into three uh, D environment. And yes, of course, you can do much more. So 
let me now going to touch designer right away. So if you download a uh, touch designer, you might have to sign up to open up the uh, uh, software. So if you open up the software, you can see this uh, window. So you can close this palette here, but first let me just briefly explain the interface in Touch Designer. So Touch Designer, as I said, um, has different functions and different um, uh, operators. So if you press tap button, you will see different uh, operate a dialogue. And here, the different uh, families, it's called families. So you can see gray and violet, green and, and blue and yellow and pink. So each different families has different, uh, different functions. So components has, uh, has uh, so many functions with, uh, with complex communication in touch signer. For example, you can put geometry or you can put a camera or you can put a physics and you can put light for complex communication for that. So top, here's, uh, here's uh, really important because top and chop and sob, these three uh, families are uh, consistently using to, uh, to have a network. So top is texture operator. So if you, uh, bring in a, a file such as images or video file, it, it automatically convert it to texture operator. So <clears throat> any media you bring it in will be will be showed with just violet color. And green, this is channel operator. So channel operator can um, make a signals. And you can see a frequencies or like high pitch or low pitch. So the, all the data will be generated by chop. And SOP is surface operator. So with SOP operator, you can, you can make a 3D object. For example, there is a spear or there is a, a vertex or there is a um, tools, there's a um, the 3D texture, and there's a line, polyline. So if you want to play with 3D objects, you must um, you must use a soap to create 3D and texture. Uh, if you want to uh, map texture onto 3D object, you have to uh, put the mat. There are different other ways to uh, put texture uh, in touch signer, but normally uh, texture will be made uh, with this operators and data. These functions are very um, exclusive. And you can put data and you can simply um, uh, include Python or JavaScript, but today I'm not gonna use data. So what I'm gonna do today is using um, these four important uh, families to create audiovisual content. And let's close this operator. And you can, if you uh, double click, you can see this screen as well. So you can either press tap button or you can simply just double click. And here is you can see the parameters here. So for example, this is default screen you are probably face with when you open up this touch signer. So for example, if you click 
this operator, you will see all these parameters. So by controlling these parameters, you're able to uh, manipulate a visual or audio in real time. So and uh, here's the palette. It's a very uh, so touch signer basically made this uh, palette for for people to easily. Uh, create and use um, different effects. But today I'm not going to use this palette, so just close. And yeah, these are the bar on the top. So that <coughs> the window version and uh, Macintosh uh, will a bit different. The interface are a little bit different, but mostly same. So, if you use a uh, if you use a uh, Macintosh, no worries. Those are all functions here. Because I'm using Microsoft, so a little bit different. And here's you can click, and here's files you can save, and you can open, and you can. You can uh, import files and e export movies, but today we are not going to import any uh, images or video. So let's just delete everything. So if you use a, a three button with a real mouse, you can simply uh, right click and hold and then drag in to select them all. And just delete. And everything will be clean. So this is going to be a basic uh, screen. Nothing. So if you press P button, the all parameters disappear. And now just press tap button. And go to chop, and let's bring audio file in. So probably you already play the the, the touch signer. So if you want to pause, you can simply press spacebar. Like this, and this is uh, you can see the signals, but you're not able to hear anything. The reason because uh, touch signer always work with inputs and outputs. Every time you bring in is input, and everything you bring out will be an output. So this is input. Uh, so basically, this is uh, just touch signer already made a audio so you can just use for studying purpose uh, if you want to hear the music just press press tap button to click the output of this block and bring out wire and press tap button and you will see different operators but this time I will do I will put audio device out. Then if you do audio device out and press spacebar, you can hear the sounds. So so play button and the press spacebar. And it pose. So for the sound, um, for sounds, let me just, uh, just, just, just pose at the moment. 
So if you do this way, let me tell you how to connect with different operators. So what I did is just click output of, uh, output of this operator and press tab button. Well, you can uh, click different functions, different operators and click on the screen. So let me do that again. So click and tap button. Audio device out and play. So there's a different way to do that. So click, bring it out, and tap button, and you can type in to find uh, what you're looking for. So audio device out, just click and bring it out. So here's a, here's the, the simple way and the basic way uh, to connect each of uh, operators. So you can connect uh, as much as you can for your final outcome. So let me start to make audiovisual content right now. It's very simple actually. So as you can see, to, to zoom, let me just now, uh, so, so yeah, so Ableton, the question was Ableton link could literally bring an audio direct from Ableton. Yes, there is a functions in Palette, so you can uh, TD Ableton, so you can bring in a touch sign or Ableton package, and you can play with the Ableton in real time. So by using OSC, which is um, 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 open sound control, you can uh, play with Ableton in touch signer. Uh, wirelessly, uh, without plugging any like such such wires, uh, cables, or if you plug in, it's going to be fast. So I recommend you to connect to uh, um, uh, if you uh, I, I have different computers and connect to uh, different computers to get a fast connection. So, anyways, so you probably uh, face with two channels here. The reason why is because it's basically the stereotype. Anytime you bring in an audio file, it will be mastered file. So it will have a two channels. So video file in, so you're going to have two channels here, and you're going to see the parameters here, and you can uh, play and start play or reload, or you can uh, uh, control the speed, and you can turn down the volume. Uh, for the sound system for now, let me just connect to MIDI control, which is for um, So media device out. So audio device out first. So. Hi, Youngjun, sorry to disturb you. No. I've got a couple of questions. So That's before you move on in. to the next. The sorry, can you hear me? Very important function. So basically the null is just empty. So there's no such parameters. So you can simply just duplicate the, all, all the channels. You can you can just see all the uh, frequencies of channel, but there's no uh, parameters. But you can save the memory in your computer, or you can uh, simply connect it to different um, operators without interven in intervention. 
So what I need is just merge these two, but I'm going to select. So one of channels. So, so here, bring your mouse cursor here and right click and insert operator and type in select so you can see two channels and I just need a one channel here What I'm going to do is visualize this channel because this is basically just sound wave. So you're not able to bring into 3D environments because it's just a simple signal. But let me just bring this signal into 3D environments. So as I said, SOP is surface operator and it works with 3D objects. So right click and left click here and bring it out to wire and tap button and press SOP and click CHOP to SOP. And you will see this one, this CHOP, but you can see nothing. You're not able to see anything in 3D. This is not moving at all. The reason because is this channel scope with TX and TY and TZ. If you press this button, you can see channel number one, which is the same as this channel. So click to channel number one and delete everything. And something is changed. And if you play again, it's moving, but it's not quite the same as this signal. The reason is this is wave and up and down. So it's written to Y axis. So we need to set out um, attribute scope here. So delete here. If you press this button again, you can see all these different functions. But what we need is a position, up and down position. So point position Y, you can select it. So it's not a thing. So and play again. So working with lines here. So if you want to see entirely, you can simply just active here's viewer. You can click this plus button, or you can right click and click view, see how it works. So play, and you can simply click here and hold and moving around and you can see in three dimensionally. You can see in three dimensional here. So you can play around with it to see and make sure your uh, design is working well. And if you press right button and hold, you can move like this. So, and if you click again and press H, it's uh, making you uh, you're going to default setting. It's a home button. So close. So now it's working with like this. But I want to put this 3D object into 3D environment. So how do we do? So click here to bring out no first. Because this is just my old habit. Uh, every time I goes into next uh, next operator, I put no beforehand. So click again and tap button 
and component and geometry click the reason i put geometry here after so the reason is this is just 3d object but we need 3d environments that are sort of 3d space it's like human so if you see something in 3d we need uh, what we need is just just vision to see what is going on and the environment and light without light it's completely dark so we need light and we need camera this touch side i need eyes so this camera will watch in this 3D object. And with these operators, we need to render. So press tab button and go to top and find render. And play again to make sure it's working. So the reason I put render and I, the reason I find render operator in top family, because it's basically the 2D. It's not 2D, it's not 3D. So here's until here, it's all 3D. But in order to see on screen, we need to convert 3D into 2D. So now you can play with lines here, but you can't really see. So display, if you click this display button or shortcut D, press D, you can see, uh, you can preview this operator. The behind background is checkerboard, it's alpha. So it's empty space, it's just the only visual you created. And you have to click again and press tab button and say out. And now it's going out and this is this will be final outcome. So in between, if you want to uh, have a black background, you can simply insert operator and transform. Click and press P and find the background color. And here's R, G, B data. So if you here uh, put a value number one, it's going to be red. And if you put number one here, it's going to be green. And if you put number one here, it will be blue. So here's alpha value. So let's say just put number one here. And come over background color, tick this button. And you can see this background, black background. So let me change. Press D again to close preview and click this and press D button to preview. Then play. But it, it, it looks a bit vague. You're not able to see, uh, you're uh, fully recognize what is going on because we didn't put a texture here. As I said, texture operators in matte family. So you can put a why is my render? So let me just uh, read a question. So, uh, 
why do you need so if if those could get a couple more things that would be perfect okay uh, question okay uh, why do you need a new component no new no operators really need it because no is as i said just empty so you can just simply duplicate and because sometimes it uh, ha it has a different uh, parameters and if you don't put no then it's going to be so messy so this is the reason first you put to uh, put a no here before you uh, convert it to other other uh, families of operators A question from the uh, why is my render scale has a question yeah so there, there are different reasons uh the, if you have a a problem in render top something like icon you can press wheel if you if you use mouse control if you use the three button mouse with a wheel you can simply click wheel and something happened and something warning you why it, th there is a problem on uh, on this render top? Uh, so you can simply click wheel and see what happened, and then close by clicking other screen. So let's put a uh, let's put text by pressing tab button and click mat and wireframe bring in and now here's uh, here's very interesting point you can just drag in so click and hold and drag into geometry and like this and it's all parameters you can see so so adapt it to material then you can see much more brighter image on the screen because this is wireframe and color white and this is alpha so if you let me just do just make sure if you play this alpha channel like 0.5 and steaming out and press one and this is maximum value you can have and it's more brighter because however even though it's responding to the sound surrounded sounds here or uh, the sounds from the file you might want to change the shape of wave here and you can click here and insert operator and you can do Look up. And you can find wave. So if you put look up in the middle, so there is already linked together. So simply you can uh, put your mouse cursor in the middle and right click, insert operator, and look up. And you can connect different shape of signals, and it will look up these signals with this one. It's so basically this uh, operator function is uh, blending the two signals in real time. So if you press P with this wave, you can play with period so you can have a different shape depending on this wave 
And if you convert it, if you flip, so you can right uh, left click and left click again, just flip. So depending on the samples on your signal, sometimes it's really important. Because here, as you can see, if you uh, press a wheel to see the information, to 600 samples here, 10 seconds, and 600 frame. And sample rate is 60 samples per sec. But here, so here, so 735 samples by one frame, and 44,100 samples per sec for the sample rate. So it's different. So we need to resample this one to fit into this one. So what I'm going to do is, come on. What I'm going to do is uh, click this wave operator and go to channel and change the start value and end value. So there's different parameters you can play with. So here's sample frame, seconds. So press samples. Here's press samples. If you click again, there are 735 samples. So if you type 735 samples, it's going to be 736 samples. The reason because touch signer Count, uh, count samples from a zero value. So zero is also having a, a single value. So you have to put six, uh, 734 to make sure the same value is going on. And you can see different shape of sound wave. So, oh, question from Dini. So my render, so apologies, I've uh, just like a lot of questions here. So let me just uh, solve questions first. Most of my render scares has a caution icon. So solve that. Render operator I have problem before, so I'm kind of confused from a. So, briefly, using texture, coordinate, but the soap. So, a lot of issues here. So, let me start again from the beginning how it works. So, I put the audio file in. And I select channel one and link it to link it to null. And I convert a channel to 3D object. And here I scoped channel by clicking this. And I detect position. Why? Because I want to find the up and down value. So this signal is converted to 3D. And before going to geometry component, I put a no. And for it to be rendered, I put camera, I put light, and I put a texture. So with these components, you can see this visual. And I put the black background. 
by by put up one alpha value and output here. The MIDI job required. Yeah, MIDI and math. MIDI doesn't really need because this is the reason I put a MIDI is because I want to uh, make sure my sound system is working well. So it doesn't really need. So I just manipulate it. Uh, I control sounds with my MIDI control. But uh, if you uh, just following this tutorial, so you don't need MIDI, you can just play. And math. Math chop is really important. So for example, if you uh, put math and you can multiply or you can uh, magnify the value, which means if you uh, range five, you can see different scale of the visual. So if you play again and to go back to wave chop, there are different parameters here. You can go with Gaussian, triangle, ramp, square, pose, sign. So It's all different, but you can play with it in real time. For example, so by uh, control by controlling like different values and putting different values, you can play with sounds to trigger different shape of visual. And if you do this way, going, going to this button, and if you press perform mode, you can see the black screen and without, uh, without interface, you can see the visual. You have to put out here if you want to play this perform mode. You have to make sure you put output top here. So here's the way to uh, to create audio visual um, contents in very simple and basic way. So let me just have a question. So P5. Find the samples of the file. So if you want to find the samples, just uh, just drag in the files and just click and press the fill button or information, you can see by right clicking, you can see this this functions, and then you can click information, and here's a sample seven hundred thirty five. So sometimes uh, checking the uh, checking the number number of uh, samples is really important before you uh, convert the channels into a three D object or three D environment. So make sure. Uh, the same samples going on. So now if you play, here's a finer visual. And 
this is a tutorial for every, uh, this is um, final outcome and let me share different uh, useful references you can have So there are a lot of different tutorials for beginners in Touch Steiner website and Touch Steiner YouTube channel. And the Blim is really cool. And this uh, YouTube channel is very useful for beginner. And thank you. And this is my website and Instagram. Let me pass back to Jasmine to close my tutorial. Um, let me just say a massive thank you. Thank you so much. And um, we'll have to take you out of the stream so we don't get feedback. But just wanted to say a massive thank you to you, Young Joan. Um, that was amazing to have you here. Um, so yeah, I will catch up with you after. But a massive thank you. And everybody, um, I hope that you managed to follow that. It was a lot to fit into one session. Um, so don't worry if you did get a little bit lost or if you feel like you were just taking it all in. That's normal. That's fine. It happens to all of us when we use a program for the first time. And these sessions are all about breaking down those barriers and having someone there to talk you through what's happening and, and why things work. And of course, you can watch this session back um so yeah hopefully you can at least get started um with audio visual content in touch designer now even if you need to watch the session back um but well done for following along and thank you for asking questions throughout and responding to what we were saying um it's been wonderful to have you all here um you know a massive thank you from the cci and i'm sure from you to our special visiting artist today young john all the way from Korea. Um, so that was fantastic. And thank you to you for spending your Tuesday evening with us. If you liked what you saw today, if you are a new person to the program, or if you are already an existing pro um, an existing person that's been joining us, please feel free to continue to follow this month's program. We've got two more sessions left for you. That is Maths Behind Creative Computing, and that is next Tuesday, same time, same place. And the Tuesday after the final session in the program is Python Drawing. So again, Tuesday, 4 p.m. So if you are interested, you can find us on Eventbrite's UAL CCI and sign up to sessions there. You can also, um, CCI, if you've got a moment, just to pop it in the Slido chat, the bit.ly link for next week's session, bit.ly slash after school club, all with capitals. So af capital A, after school club with a capital S and a capital C underscore nine. So that's bit.ly slash after school club underscore nine and capitalize the after the school and the club. Um, hopefully someone's popped that in the chat for you as well. So that is the sign up link to next week's session or you can find us on Eventbrite and follow the sessions there. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Well done for getting started with audio visuals. I'm sure you're going to have loads more fun with Touch Designer after the session and see you next week.